My guest this week is Richard Job, mortgage broker, and we are talking about his journey into the world of mortgage broking. Welcome to the Mortgage Broker Broadcast with me, Craig Skelton. Join me every week while we're developing your knowledge to help you build a successful mortgage broker business. Following on from my previous podcasts and feedback I've received from the listeners and subscribers so far, it is clear that people want to hear from people that have experienced getting into the world of mortgage broking, who have gone from a total career change into mortgage broking, or people that have gone from employed to self-employed. So I've got quite a few guests coming on to who are going to sort of share their experiences, their thoughts, their challenges, and things like that. We had, we've already had Franco Carpinelli on, who uh, came from a family business into mortgage broking, and then this week I've got Richard Job on the podcast, who um, changed his career, went to do something totally different, and yeah, he's here to share his story. So welcome to the podcast, Richard. Are you well? Yeah, well, thank you, Craig. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. So thanks for agreeing to being on the Mortgage Broker Broadcast podcast, which is a bit of a mouthful, but thanks for being on here and just sort of sharing about your sort of career change and the challenges you faced and uh, and the new world that you're in now. So first of all, obviously, it's first time on the the, the podcast. Do you want to just give a bit of a background about yourself, introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Richard. I started with, with CS Mortgage Solutions in November 2020. Um, my kind of background is is not from the, the sector at all. I, I kind of finished university and went into a business-to-business sales career pretty much by accident um, and then kind of progressed up the, you know, the greasy pole from, from there, I guess. And uh, had a massive rethink last year um, in terms of career and stuff, and then that's when I kind of made the change and and uh, and yeah, joined CS in in November. So yeah, really really enjoying it so far. And um, and yeah, do you want me to go into a bit more detail as to as to how that came about and and why and stuff? Yeah, please, mate. Yeah, if you can, just to explain to you sort of why because obviously it has been a quite big career change for you. So what is why did you want to become a mortgage broker? What was the, the inspiration behind that? Yeah, so there's there's probably like there's two bits to this. One is um, is interest in property. So that kind of developed from I would say maybe you know 2017. Um, I, I ended up in a position where I had I had a property that I owned, and it was one of those keep it or sell it type of dilemmas and. I did a lot of research and a lot of reading about, you know, about buy to let and just completely got the bug uh, when it comes to property investment. So I ended up selling that house, buying a, you know, buying a, a rental, managing the refurb um, whilst I was doing my previous previous business to business sales job and just, just loved it. So my kind of plan A was buy a load of houses, put my feet up. Uh, so that was, that was kind of where the, the property interest started from but then i think last year kind of pandemic furlough uh, gave me a lot of opportunity to to think about what that looks like when you do put your feet up uh, because that's pretty much what I, what i was doing um and it's really not all it's cracked up to be as i'm sure some people found out it's nice for a couple of weeks but then you do get quite bored um so the thinking was well if i'm going to work until I'm, you know, in my in my sixties, maybe that I need to do something I enjoy. So that's when the kind of thinking about it started, and the the kind of real the real thing that helped me do it. Ironically, it was my old boss from my old job that recommended this book. Um, but it's called "What Color Is Your Parachute?" And there's this exercise in the middle of it called um, the Flower Exercise. You probably see see that. Probably not so okay easy. yeah it was actually meant as like um a leadership thing so obviously trying to, to grow my leadership skills and getting to know yourself a bit better about who you want to work with and stuff like that what what types of personalities and it actually got the cogs turning about what do what do i want to do for 
for work. So like the, there's a section called that basically says what you what are your favorite fields of interest? And I wrote down like property, um, cricket, finance and dogs. <laughs> Like as my favorite, favorite in that particular interest. order. I don't, think, I don't think it was in order, but um, <laughs> but yeah. And then you know you, you put that with other other stuff like what what do I love to do and what can I do? What am I good at? And I kind of put all that together and looked at right, how can I get into a property related sector that ticks a lot of boxes and just kind of looked into mortgage advice and and took it from there. Did my C map and I reached out to yourself. And uh, and yeah, here, here we are. So yeah, there you go. It's kind of a short, shortish version, I guess. But and the rest is history, as they say. So no, no, that's a, it's, it's interesting to hear. What was the book called again, Richard? Just so we're clear, what was the it's book called? Was called? Um, what color is your parachute? What color is your parachute? Right, brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Right, okay. Just I'm, I'm interested. I'm gonna have a look at that book. Check that book out now to have a look at sort of yeah, and, what you've drawn in inspiration. And you can obviously you can just google like the flower the flower exercise from the center of that uh, center fold of that book you find that online um in terms of you know right writing down these things and and working out what what kind of career or job suits what you want to like what you want to do and what you want to talk about so yeah Hi, okay Different stuff sort of backfired on my old boss though um you know <laughs> yeah. that book and me handing my notice from like six <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it was quite his motivation to uh, give you give you the book. And here's a suggested reading. And by the way, that's going to be a catalyst for your handing your notices and go a total career change and uh, become a mortgage broker. So, but these yeah. things happen, don't they? These things happen. Yeah, absolutely. No, but um, yeah, it's been so good for you. It's like that was oh, sorry, man. I'm, that was good for you in terms of the the trigger to give you something to to sort of work on and the, the flower as you've sort of said it's giving you that sort of piece of work to then look at and really evaluate what you was doing where you was going what your main drivers were in life really which is which is good like and i think that's sort of sometimes difficult for people to see because there's a lot of people have changed the way that they perceive their career during lockdown, the last 18 months has been real sort of eye-opening for quite a lot of people in terms of thinking, I want to do something totally different. Not only not only doing something, doing something totally different, but reevaluating their lives from a lifestyle point of view, where they live, what they do day to day. And like for you, that's you've taken that time of, yes, to people think of the ideal of, Oh, it's great being at home and great sort of furloughed or whatever the case may be. I think it, but then I'd be like you two weeks, I don't two weeks in, like, well, what I'm going to do now? Like, this is just getting a bit boring and a bit, what I need to do something else. I need to, so I know what I'm like if I take a, a day off out of the business and and I sort of then the, I look forward to getting, which might sound a bit sad, but because I enjoy and love doing what I do, which has been a big change for me over the last four years. I enjoy it so much. It's like now I wake up and think, oh, it's great. I'm going to get into work and do something that's sort of that's meaningful rather than sort of the the, the mundane stuff from from before, really. So, but it's it's interesting to sort of see how because that's the thing. A lot of people don't know where to start. A lot of people don't know. I think about I want to do something. I want to change something. But where's my inspiration and where's my motivation come from? And you've taken that from your old boss and the book that he's recommended. Yeah, I think the, maybe the the other thing as well is, uh, you know, a, a little benefit of a bit of life experience. So if I'd have done that, maybe that that exercise at twenty two, you know, I, I wouldn't have had a had a clue. I might, you know, I might not have really known what I what I liked and what I wanted to do and come up with something completely different. But kind of in my early thirties now, I think you you do kind of work out, you know, what what you want to. You know, what you're good at, what you're not, what you like, what you don't, and I think that I think about a red ages ago or something along the lines of people don't drop on the the career uh, that they stay in until the early thirties on average. So you know when when younger people are kind of you know oh, I don't know what I don't know what I want to do. I think the one thing that you kind of say is well that's that's normal. Just try stuff and and see what you enjoy and what you don't and. And one day it'll it'll click, 
But I think it, the most important thing for me is I wouldn't have been able to make this change if I didn't have support around me from, you know, from family, from um, from Laura, my, my partner. And, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to go from employed, comfortable salary um, to self-employed, no money for a few months and, and building a business up. So that's, that is a factor as well for people. You do need that support network around you. Definitely. I, I totally agree with you. I think that is something that when I'm talking to people that are looking to get into mortgages or move from employed to self-employed, I'm really pleased you've sort of said that because I go on about that all the time, about the support, making sure you get the support from the people behind you, your friends, your family, to do this sort of to thing because if you don't have that support, I don't know like what your thoughts are on this, Richard, but I think when I set up my firm up, sort of four years ago like the discussion started for sort of four and a half years ago if i didn't have the support from my family behind me to look to do this it would have been a very diff a lot more difficult to do i think if you've got that support behind because you are going through a, a big career change and a change of something from certainly from it's big enough going from doing something totally different from a career change but going from employed to self-employed is it is just is an, just as big monumental thing to to add on top of that and if you've not got the support behind you you might be okay at the start but when things do start to get a little bit tough it's then if you've not got that support from the start it just becomes then you start to resent what you're doing rather than love the do doing what you're doing and just dealing with that tough time yeah 100 percent. like you said it, it is one thing going from you know I do this for a living to doing something different, but to go straight into kind of doing something foreign and doing it self-employed as well, it is quite a big adjustment. Um, but yeah, I, I think if, you, if you're in a position where you, your financial commitments are so large that you just, you just can't make that jump, um, you know, you can't afford to earn less for a bit while you work things out in this new career, then you, you're going to obviously struggle at you until you sort that out. But I was lucky enough to be in a position in my life where, you know, the, my costs of living were relatively low, you know, support from, from Laura, support from family, if things went completely wrong and, you know, I fell flat on my face in the first six months to a year, I knew that I'd, you, you know, what literally what is the worst that can happen? Uh, that's, I think that's a question you've got to ask yourself is, you know, what what is the worst the worst case? The worst case for me was, I give this a go. I'm no good at it. I go get another sales job. Like it's it's fine. I'd, I'd be okay. So, um, so yeah, it it it's a big thing. But with the right with the right support and you know knowing that you're doing it for for the right reasons, um, and that there's a lot more to life than just than just pounds and pence. Like the the way you're spending your days, to me especially now, is is so much more important than you know earning an amount of money just because you've got to that level in the in the past it, it doesn't make you happy which is a bit cliche isn't it but it is true isn't it like you, it, there is no correlation between the amount you earn and, and how happy you are at the, at the end of the day you'll always kind of if you keep earning more and more you find a way to spend it and you'll end up as miserable as everybody else at some point so yeah <laughs> just no, it, it, I, I I do agree with you on that because I think you can spend all the time chasing the pound and not enjoying the chase, shall we say, because then they like say once you get to earning this amount, you then more focus on the next amount and the next amount and you spend accordingly and you're always chasing that never ending goal really, which is fine. Like that it's important to have goals and what you're wanting to do and what you're wanting to to earn or whether it's a lifestyle and people each each to their own in terms of what their goals are but i think it's important to enjoy the ride as well while you get into that goal and i think that's what you're sort of saying that for you like it's not a cliche mate it is about that lifestyle and that enjoying doing what you're doing which is which is important and i think that's more people are realizing that now that they, you need to enjoy doing what you're doing and if you and if you don't then do something about it it's Going yeah, back to what you said, what you said it is about the what's the worst can happen. That I say that quite a lot, and I said that before. It's 
and you've got that mindset, which is credit to you and credit to the person that you are, that I said the same thing, what's the worst can happen? I do this, it falls flat on its face, the business fails, it doesn't work out, I'll go get a job, I'll do something else, I'll do something else, at least I've had a go at it, at least I've learned from a failure and learned from having a go at something and know more about, I don't know what your life is, but I think for me, it's more about learning about myself. I've learned so much about myself over the last four years that that's been the, the, the biggest smile on the face for me. It's not about, obviously it's important where the firm's going, what, what we're doing, what I'm doing, but I just enjoy learning about me and like learning about where I fail, learning from that, learning from mistakes, learning from things that do go well. And it's just, you just have a smile on your face constantly because you're enjoying doing what you're doing. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, you know, it is that it. We're hitting a few cliches, are we, Craig? But like, it is it is more about the kind of the the journey than the destination, which is just I'm feeling sick just saying that. But you know, you know what I'm, I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. We'll find another no. way of saying it, but I know. What, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we'll find some other way of saying. It. We'll come up with some other saying and uh, we'll not edit it in a different saying we'll just leave it as it is but we'll find (laughs) another saying for it but it is about enjoying it absolutely it is about enjoying the journey yeah i I completely agree and i think that one of the key things in that in that book that i mentioned was um you know what when you're with when you're in a group of people and you spend you know a bit of time socializing and stuff what do you find yourself talking about a lot and for me, it was kind of, it was those things I talked about before, you know, and property was a massive part of that. And it just, it just fit nicely, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been kind of a, a whirlwind, like, well, where, where are we now? July. So since November, but i you know, I've settled in pretty well and I honestly wouldn't, I w I wouldn't go back. And I think, one of the key things for me that's different between doing what I did before and doing this now is, um, is like impact on other people's lives. So b- before, you know, in business to business sales, obviously you do, you do build relationships and you have, you know, your, your clients and, you know, you, you do good things and, and you get praised sometimes and things go wrong sometimes and you get criticism. But with, with doing what I'm doing now, it's, there's a very kind of, um tangible impact on on people's lives when you you know you can really make a difference helping people to buy that that first home or you know even get a mortgage when they didn't think they could and it, it is extremely rewarding to be doing that in rather than what i was doing before so that, that's a big thing for me i think when you're sort of looking at when you are business to business it's a different concept altogether into whereas it where b to c so when you're seeing the your client you're seeing the consumer and the buying and selling buying and selling your home is as we all as we say we're going to hear another cliche it's like one of the most stressful things you're going to do in your life so if you helping people and helping people through that journey and trying to make it as smooth as it possibly can there's always going to be bumps in the road with every house purchase and selling your own home or buying a new home or your first home there's always going to be bumps but if you've got like for you when you're helping your clients go through that and you're holding their hand through the whole process and then they come out the other side and you get the feedback like you do from your clients and the the trust pilot reviews that you get and the feedback that you get is because you can see those people and the impact that you've had and you can see how life changing it is because it is life changing for those people. It is when you're piecing those things together and you're helping them buy the first home or move home, and it's life changing. It, you have more of an influence on it because you can see the reality of it, can't you? Rather than the B two B, with B two C, you see more of, like I say, more of the reality of everything. Yeah, de- definitely. And you know, there's there's obviously two sides to that coin as well, is because because. You get all that positive um you know those positives when you do things well but you do feel the pressure as well that they're in your hands and uh you know if you, if you make a mistake or something then obviously it's on you so 
there's two sides to it, but is it is extremely rewarding and and you know sometimes the more complicated the circumstances the the greater reward there is at the end of it um so yeah i am i'm really enjoying what i'm doing craig bro so everything sounds very positive you've had this career change you've got the support of your family everything's sort of going sort of so well but not to sort of put a negative into it but have you sort of found anything that's what's been your biggest challenge or challenges during this sort of career change and, and doing what you do now? Yeah, there's, yeah. I mean, if, if, if it wasn't challenging, it would be, it would be boring, of course. So, you know, there, there are always challenges. I think, you know, aside from probably the obvious stuff, which is I've gone from doing something completely different to doing, you know, something, something new, you get that kind of fish out of water feeling where you used to just do stuff in your sleep. You were, you know, you're very competent to be in completely new and all the learn on the job stuff that, you know, that you, you just need to do the, do the cases and do the hours to, to pick up. So yeah, definitely that side of it, but, you know, but also that transition for me from employed life, you know, the, the salary hitting the bank every month, um, you know, the same amount, nice and comfortable, got my spreadsheet, I know what's going out and everything to, that self-employed question mark of, you know, the first few months, there's nothing because that's how this industry works. Obviously you, there's a bit of a turnaround in the, in the pipeline. So, you know, the first few months getting nothing at all. And then, you know, not really knowing what, what's coming in um, and what's going to drop and, and that being a little bit out of your control. So that's, that, that was challenging, you know, quite a big adjustment for me to, get my head around that but to be honest now that's now that's kind of worked out and you've got the you know you've 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 done the the hard yards in having a few months without anything coming in you know now things are a little bit a bit easier a bit more regular um so yeah the, and there's you know you know how how this this sort of sector works there's occasional you know small frustrations here and there with you know, with systems or with, um, you know, the, the odd kind of weird, weird situation with a lender or, but, you know, they're, they're small and they're going to be in whatever job you do. So, you know, generally for me, the, the positives far outweigh any, you know, any, any challenges or, or frustrations. Fantastic. Is anything else that we've missed or not talked about with the change in your career and the, the successes and the challenges you've had so far? Um, no, I wouldn't say um, like anything, anything massive that we've missed, but I think for me, there was a bit of a, a kind of spell where I was just, I was, I was researching the whole, you know, the whole thing and how, you know, how, how do you become a mortgage broker? So you should have seen my search history at that little period, you know, <laughs> how do you become a mortgage broker? What's this? What, what's that? So like, I think if, if people are, are listening to this, um, you know, with a view to that, I think you know, there, there is a, a big kind of learning curve to go on there in like, just how easy is it to, to come straight into this, set up your own company and, and start advising, um, so I think the key takeaway is it's not it's not that easy. So for me, I've a, a lot of the kind of really hard, like hard stuff, has been like negated or made loads easier by working with you, Craig. So like it's not, um, you know, I, I feel like I've had my own challenges, but you know, I've got I've got you and the other advisors in the firm around me to help me. So. I, I really don't know how it would have panned out if I'd have tried to go on my own straight away as a, you know, new to mortgage advice and new to self-employed life. I'm not sure how it would have worked out. Um, so I'd just say anyone who's looking at getting into this, speak to a few different, you know, reach out to people, speak to a few different uh, different people and and work out kind of what's best for you with your level of experience and level of knowledge in the in the market and stuff fantastic we're well, gonna end it there because that is a great poignant non-cliche bit to end on in terms of uh, <laughs> what you said so uh 
Richard, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your honesty and sharing your journey, experiences, challenges so far. So I really do appreciate it. Thanks very much, mate. You're welcome, Craig. Thanks for having me on. Are you an experienced mortgage advisor who is looking to go alone and set up your own firm? Is owning your own brand and business important to you? Do you keep putting off the decision because you just don't know where to start? Let me explain the My Brand My Way program. This is aimed at experienced mortgage advisors who are looking to go alone and set up their own brand and business. So what does the My Brand My Way program offer? You would own your own brand, your clients and your business while still creating your own legacy. You would still receive the competitive rates you would as if you went direct to a network and these improve as you grow. You pay a monthly fee which includes your compliance, your indemnity, CRM and all your licenses. Differences you get my help, support and coaching in not only setting up your business and brand, I will help you grow. If this is something of interest to you, please get in touch so we can arrange an informal discussion.